Hello, everybody! Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome, one and all. Where have I been? Oh, dear. So, we have moved houses yet again, but now we actually, like, have a, a house? House? No more New York and L.A. apartments for us. We have a house. So, we have a new office here, which you can't see, and I'll show it off when we have it all set up, but I haven't done any soundproofing. It's literally just a cheap Target plywood desk uh, next to a window and a quarter, so... <laughs> <laughs> Not much to see, but I'll tell you what there is to see. I remember a few episodes ago, we got the... Actually, I think it was last episode. We got the embers for the skull, and I was like, Oh, once we fill it up, it'll always be glowing forever and ever until the end of time. Not true. Alexander is carrying a human skull filled with embers. The embers are cold. Ah, so we gotta go back and get some more fresh embers. Uh, where do we get that from? That was from the druids, I think. I hope that fire is still smoldering, because we need that in order to cast the spell, because we are going to hell. Uh, thank you gods of perpetually burning embers, which is pretty impressive, seeing it was completely rained on and drowned, but what have you. Alexander exchanges the embers in his skull for more red-hot embers from the fire. Perfect. So now with this, I think we have everything we need to do the charming creature of the night. Insert your own Rocky Horror lyrics here. Except not there, because we need to be here. And hello, O oh magnificent winged black pegasus, you. A mighty winged horse, the color of midnight, is feeding from the nightshade bush. The creature must be Nightmare, the one the druids spoke about. I don't believe Nightmare actually appears until you've spoken to the druids and learn about his existence. Or her existence. A mare. Is a, I think a mare is a female horse? Yes, a mare is a female horse. Thank you, Google. All right, so let's charm the heck out of you. So to make the spell, we have the skull full of hot embers. We need brimstone, but I think an egg suffices there, a rotten egg specifically. Alexander cracks the spoiled egg and dumps it into the skull containing the embers. The spoiled egg hisses as it makes contact with the hot embers. Zounds the steam. Phew, the smell of sulfur. And uh, what was the other part? I think it was the, was it the Pure Maiden's hair? I forget. Okay, and the book just confirmed it. It is the Maiden's hair. Alexander puts the strand of hair into the skull containing the embers and the spoiled egg. I think we're ready to roll now. Alexander is carrying a human skull filled with oak embers, a strand of hair, and a spoiled egg. The embers are glowing hot. A foul, sulfurous-smelling steam rises from the spoiled egg and embers mixture. What are you doing down there, Alex? Alexander solemnly speaks the incantation over the skull. Creature of night, to me succumb. Fire and brimstone leave thee numb. Purity bind thee like a chain. To do whate'er I now ordain. I love this little, this little tickle thing with the smoke. I think that's adorable. Nightmare flares her nostrils at the scent of the fire and brimstone. That's it. Come on. I need passage to your homeland, fiery one. I forget what happens if you try to approach her without the spell. Unable to resist the power of the enchanted smell, Nightmare approaches Alexander. Her eyes appear glassy and sightless. In her hypnotized state, she is unaware of the human so close to her flank, or of anything at all except that marvelous smell. Now ride! My skull! Wow, okay, this is where the speed... Okay, that's, that scene in a 486 took about an hour. Nightmare deposits Alexander on a strange, cold world. And some of the inhabitants don't look too friendly. Welcome to the realm of the dead. Okay, a lot happened. Now, this is, you have to be on your toes here because you cannot let any of these little zombie guys touch you because you will die. The ghoulish animated bodies of the undead roam the haunted landscape. Now, I've always been very intrigued by uh, the realm of death here because you figure this is just the afterlife. So, Nightmare, I guess, is sort of like the Davy Jones of the Sierra world. I'm sure it's rooted pretty deep in mythology, and I'm too lazy to look it up, but this fairies you to sort of like this kind of purgatory-ish kind of state. Oh, look, you're a chef, and you still have the knife in your bag. The ghoulish and... 
Oh, I wish you could look up some stories about these guys. They looked uh, they all have a story, I know. Who are you, poor undead creatures? <laughs> I see. How interesting. Wait, listen closely at the end of that. Who are you? are like this click. I see. That's some sort of uh, sound from the recording room, or maybe them hitting stop on the tape player or something? I don't know. Anyway, so this is kind of like purgatory. So these are people who are too restless or still have unfinished, fun, unfinished business or otherwise can't afford fare to get to their eternal rest. So these guys just kind of wander around forever. Alexander is standing on the surface of the realm of the dead. The barren, surreal landscape is cold and gray. Twisted shapes loom on the horizon. The surface is haunted by the ghoulish shapes of the undead and by the chained, tormented spirits of mortals unable to rest in peace. I wonder, by taking the coins, which are supposed to be able to pay the ferryman to get into your eternal rest, if I just, like, robbed somebody completely? No, they must have already paid their fare by now, and because they were just skeletal and rotted bones. But maybe if I took that money away, maybe they were kicked out. It's like, oh, it looks like your funds dried up there, Skeletor. Out you go. Who are these two spectral folks? Restless spirits are bound to the surface of the underworld. Chained by earthly cares, they are unable to go below. These two spirits wander together. The spirit of a beautiful and noble-looking woman floats silently alongside that of a desperate-looking man. Well, I'm sure they don't need my help. They look fine. What happened to this poor guy? Is that something stuck in his head? You poor soul. Oh, man, tormented forever. Sucks to be you. Hello, ghosts. Let me wait for you to come closer. I'll get you on your next round. Maybe not. There you go. Who are you, grieving spirits? I am Queen Ilaria of the Land of the Green Isles, and this beloved spirit is my husband, King Califam. We were murdered in our beds by our trusted wizier, like a viper. He snuck in during the night and stabbed us in our sleep. Now my husband's soul is broken, and he will not speak. Then you are the ones I seek. Are you not the parents of Princess Cosima? Our daughter! Have you news of the princess? I know that she is alive and safely back in her kingdom after being rescued from Mordak. But I'm afraid I have not personally seen her. Alhazred is keeping her in her room in mourning for you. I am glad to hear of her return, but she will not be safe alone with that devil. Oh, that we could be there to protect her. Kasima, how I fail thee. My poor husband will never rest while our murder goes unavenged and our daughter is in danger. I came to take you back with me. Your people are still loyal to you. They need to know about the Wazir. Kasima needs you too. But this is the realm of the dead. We cannot leave it. Nor for that matter can you. The only one who might be able to return us all to the land of the living is the Lord of the Dead. But he would never help us. He has no mercy. I might be able to convince him. I must try. Then take this. It is my ticket to the underworld. There you will find the Lord of the Dead. I cannot use the ticket as long as I'm chained here. And if we cannot be avenged, I will never be unchained. Thank you. Perhaps it will save us all. She had a ticket on the number nine. Be careful, young man. If you can ease my husband's torment and help our daughter, we will be most grateful. I will do my best. Goodbye, Queen Alaria. I think it's safe to stand next to these two guys, because I don't think contact with them will kill you. But let's test that theory. Let's wait for these guys to move, because I know they will. No, no, these guys are fine. But if I touch these guys... But of course, now I can't. Alexander wishes to comfort the tormented spirits, but they are beyond the warmth of human hands. Alexander decides to get closer to the undead creature. Those ellipses are always bad news. A decision that was definitely not one of his best. Oh, I just disintegrate. Ugh. Well, that's one way to get in to see the king. Tickets. Oh. Next.
Alexander's mother always told him to avoid bad ghouls. Uh, I think it's even more gruesome if you just walk up to him. Uh-oh. One of the wandering ghouls brushes up against Alexander. The touch of the putrid flesh dissolves the living matter like acid. Oh, that makes it sound even more gruesome. All right, that's all we can do here. The music here also reminds me of um, Space Quest IV in a way. Oh, let me guess, you're another nice looking ghost. You need some assistance. I love that. Ollie, where is my little boy? Ollie. The bookstore owner? The luminous moon casts a glow over the strange dark landscape. A monstrous skull looms at the end of the twisted path. The passing spirits are all heading for it as though it were a magnet. It must be the entrance to the underworld. Mm, these must be Ferris ghosts. The surface of the realm of the dead feels even more oppressive here. A path leads to an ominous looking skull that looms in the distance. The surface is haunted by the ghoulish shapes of the undead and by the chained, tormented spirits of mortals unable to rest in peace. Well, now I'm here, here to solve all your problems. Hello, moon. The moon does not hear Alexander's voice. I love that they just even make it an option. The skull at the end of the path pays no attention to Alexander. Alexander hesitates to break the mournful, heavy atmosphere by speaking aloud. By singing a jaunty song. Ali. Yes, yes, we know you want Ali. Oh, up, 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 up. Careful. Keep your distance, pirate ghost. Some natural instinct draws the spirits of the newly deceased to the realm of the dead. They all seem to be focused on the skull that looms in the distance. Well, except for this show-off who likes to explode into a little skull shape. The spirit of a woman hangs like a puff of smoke in the air. She is weeping and appears to be very distressed about something. Why do you not rest, sad spirit? Rest? I cannot rest. My son is lost. Lost? You mean, in this realm? No. His spirit is stuck in the land of the living, probably looking for me. But I cannot leave to go show him the way. My poor Ali. Is there anything I can do? Take this handkerchief. If you get back to the land of the living and find him, tell him that his mother is waiting for him here. By this kiss, he'll be able to find his way to the realm of the dead. I'll do my best to find him. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my Ali. Thank you. And goodbye forever. See, I'm not sure if that actually is enough, like that hope that her son will make it back is enough to put her at rest and that's why she explodes, but probably not. All right, off to the foreboding skull, the entrance to the realm of the dead, which we've seen so many times before. The skeleton to the left of the path hands something to the spirits that approach the underworld entrance. Oh, uh, we know it well. Take it, please. Next. See, in that instance, he says, Ticket, please, just fine. But uh, let me see if I can get him to say the line that sounds like they just sort of forced him to use. I must see the Lord of the Dead. Please let me pass. Tickets only. No, it doesn't sound the same. The skeleton at the door seems quite determined. Alexander has the feeling that trying to physically force his way past the skeleton at the door is not a good idea. What happens if I just try and walk up? Alexander approaches the entrance to the underworld. Oh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Take it, please. Huh. So all of his lines say, ticket, please, but when you die, it's like, tickets, ah. Uh. Whatever. Well, thank you, sir. A uniformed skeleton stands guard at the entrance to the underworld. He takes something from the passing spirits and then waves them on into the underworld. It seems like a bizarre system. If this guy gives out the ticket, and then the ticket is collected right here, what's the point? 
Alexander is standing at the entrance to the underworld. The entrance is a huge tendon-covered skull. The skull's mouth is the doorway to whatever lies below. Two solemn skeletons admit the spirits who seem to be drawn, trance-like, to enter the skull. I've always liked this guy's little helmet. A strange skeleton with a long, horse-like head and ceremonial armor stands at the base of the path to the underworld. He watches over new arrivals with a discerning eye, handing tickets to the spirits desiring admittance. A large bone key ring hangs from his waist. Oh, I always thought he was holding that in his hand. Why do you only have one shoe? Might I get one of those tickets? The skeleton with the tickets must not approve of Alexander's less than ghostly looks. He refuses to give him a pass. The skeleton with the keys looks rather grave. Alexander doesn't want to touch him. Dang. Give me a ticket. How about you guys back here? Can you be of any help? Nice bone structure. Thanks. Hey, that's just the narrator. Cheaters. I want the skeleton to have a voice. Unless... <gasps> Are you the narrator? Is the narrator dead all the time? Oh, what a twist. Nice bone structure. Thanks. Hmm. A group of large bones form an interesting arrangement to the right of the path. Two smaller bones are propped up on the ground near the larger group. What could it be? The group of bones near the path does not respond to the sound of Alexander's voice. Yet they've recorded a line for it. It could just be that standard, nope, that thing does not respond. Because King's Quest VI. All right, let's do it. I've been waiting for this moment. I used to show this off to, like, my parents. I used to make them gather around the computer screen to watch, but ah, I love it. Alexander picks up the two bones on the ground. Now, what do these bones remind him of? Ah, uh, yes. Now I remember. The skeletons are overcome with the musical call of the bones. They begin to jiggle, then to dance. Jiggle. Ah, uh, I just adore this. I'm just gonna let this play out. It always looks like the skull that's uh, taking the tickets with the red armbands looks like he's wearing headphones. Yeah! Boogie boogie down, you horse-headed skeleton, you! Alexander finishes his tune, and the skeletons resume their posts. Despite their frolic, they don't seem any friendlier. I... I'm grinning because of the can-can skeletons. It just makes my life complete. But the entire point of that was that he dropped his key. A key made of bone has fallen from the skeleton's key ring, and now lies on the ground. Alexander picks up the skeleton key. Perfection. Okay, so I remember I don't really need a ticket because I was given one by Queen Alaria. Oh, that's so cool looking, too. The ghostly ticket reads, Admit 1. Alexander can see his hand right through the transparent ticket. Oh, that's a nice touch. I didn't know about that. Neat. All right. I know I don't give it to you, but what, what do you say? That skeleton has plenty of tickets and isn't interested in the one that Queen Alaria gave to Alexander. All right, sir. Tickets, please. Here you go. I want a ride. I have a ticket. I do have a ticket. Oh, on. Next. Next. Perfect. I'm through the sphincter. This is one of my favorite rooms in the entirety of the undead, right next to the king's chambers. I just love this place. It's so serpentine and organic and creepy. It kind of reminds me of uh, King's, no, no, um, Quest for Glory 4, Shadows of Darkness, because the entire game looked like this. A strange path grown up from the depths of the river and out from the surrounding walls spirals down into the underworld. An ebony mass of liquid flows below the path. It must be the river Styx. 
in every single game, if you ever see the river Styx, you always, always, always have to get a sample of it. In every single game, I swear to God, if you ever see the Styx, you'll also have a cup and something that you need to collect it for. Can we collect it from here? Alexander can't reach the river from here. No, okay, so we'll get there soon. Extending from the walls are outgrowths spouting flickering flames. The eerie torches dimly light the passages of the underworld. Alexander is standing inside the underworld. Organic walls form an oppressive passageway from which a spiraling path emerges and descends into the darkness. Far below, the surface of a black glassy river eerily reflects the glow of flickering torches. It just paints such a romantic picture. Even if you weren't sighted and you just kind of heard that, the mental image you get just works. Who are you, my poor friend? Apparently, Alexander's not the only one who's curious about the body on the path. I like that the ghosts still have like a semblance of their old selves. If they were curious in life, they're also curious in death. Little ghosts is floating around in there. It's like, hey, what's this? A knight's remains lie abandoned on the path. The knight, like Alexander, must have been alive when he entered the underworld. But for some reason, he never reached his destination. Alexander wonders if this is the knight the druid spoke of. Yes, indeed it is. So he was the only other one that we know of that had the guts to walk brazenly through the gates of the underworld, carrying this gauntlet, which is pretty much the only way to uh, challenge the lord of the underworld. Uh, yeah, so we need that because we're going to challenge the heck out of him. The knight is wearing one black gauntlet. There appears to be some writing on the gauntlet, but Alexander can't quite make out what it says. The knight is wearing an old, tattered ribbon. It must have once meant much to him as a sign of his lady's favor. See, that right there, just... I, I love it. Just that little touch kind of gives you his entire motive of why he's down here. He's here, obviously, to rescue his lost love, and this is what that little blue ribbon's all about. I never looked at it until now, because I never actually had the patience to look at every single little thing, and I'm really glad I did. What's your story, friend? Oh, I can't talk to him. Lame. The ribbon is so old, it would crumble at Alexander's touch. I poke him in the eye. Alexander has no need for the old armor. He decides to leave the knight's remains as undisturbed as possible. You know, this kind of looks like the final armor that you get in Mask of Eternity, so maybe... Hey, head cannon, this is actually Connor. Yeah, this is his, um... His Mask of Eternity final armor. Uh, you know what? I've actually had a, uh, an urge to play Mask of Eternity again, so maybe we'll do that. Uh, here, I'm gonna put a poll right up there. If you guys want to see Mask of Eternity and see suffering and fun at the same time, vote now. Alexander takes the knight's black gauntlet and examines the writing on it. Flesh may cross the portal and seek its master death. Flesh may go where death is trod and challenge like Scheherazade, he who reigns beneath the sod to spare a mortal's breath. Zounds, that sounds serious. It's pretty much just a fancy way of saying, hey, this is my ticket that says I'm allowed to come down here and challenge you and set somebody free. And I think this is also one of the nice little paths you can take that won't just sort of toss you to your death no matter where you click. You don't have to be like, click, 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 click. You can just be like, boop, because King's West 6, and it loves you. Hello. Charon's boat is an unearthly vessel. It bears a huge skeletal prow for slicing through the river Styx. And they pronounce Sharon correctly. I love it. A lot of people just pronounce it Charon or something like that. Charon stands in his boat, eternal ferryman of the dead. Alexander can't quite make out what's under Charon's cowl, and he's not sure he would want to. Well, judging from the skeletal nature of everything else, probably a skull. The spirits of the newly deceased make their final journey into the depths of the underworld. See, they, they can't leave until I get on the boat. So they're all like, come on, get on, you're holding us up, come on. Well, then again, they've been here for like eternity, so they probably don't care. The journeying spirits seem to be in a trance and don't respond to Alexander. Oh, so they really don't care. They're going to be like that forever and are just sort of staring off into the zero distance. Charon's boat does look capable of speech, 
but Alexander is afraid to hear what it might have to say. I must see the Lord of the Dead. Please, let me ride across the river Styx on the ferry. Charon apparently has rules as strict as those of the skeletons at the underworld's entrance. Alexander is not getting on that boat until he gives Charon the appropriate fare. I guess the underworld is probably one of the only places where you can get yourself into an unwinnable state because if you don't have, uh, I think, only two items, then yeah, then you're, you're stuck down here forever and you have to reload. Hope you saved. The cold river doesn't answer Alexander. Charon's boat is an unearthly vessel. It bears a huge skeletal prow for slicing through the river Styx. Alexander stands on the banks of the river Styx. The black river is as still as a mirror and gives off a penetrating cold. Charon, the ferryman, and his eerie ship wait on the shore to shepherd souls across the river. All right, so I think that's everything we can look at, except what's this little jutting rock out here? Is this anything? The river Styx is an ebony mass of liquid, resembling black tar or melted black glass. Despite its incredible stillness, the river seems to have a life of its own. Oh, that reminds me. I was just about to get right, right on the boat, not even worry about it, but I think this is the only screen, and I don't even know if you can come back here or not, but you're close enough to the river to gather a little sample of it. I think in the teacup... Is that what you're supposed to gather it in? Uh-oh, I hope I didn't mix anything. Because in this teacup I have my swamp ooze, but it doesn't seem like the right place for river sticks water. Am I wrong? But I can always get more swamp ooze. Alexander scoops a little of the river sticks into the teacup with the swamp ooze, being careful not to get any of the black water on his skin. Oh, that sounds like a challenge. Let's take a swim. Alexander gets a chill just thinking about putting his hand in that black river. I am in control of you. Alexander. Aw, oh, man, you can't just, like, take a dip into the... Of all the dumb ways you can die, really? Fine. All right, well, let's pay the ferryman. Uh, that's what these two old coins are for. There you go, my friend. Oh, it says D on it here, but it looks like it says C there. Ah, oh, well, C here, D there. C here, Charon. Will these coins do as fair for passage? Charon accepts the fare and waves Alexander onto the boat. All right, hope you have everything we need. I'm pretty sure we do. Alexander. Boop. Oh, speed up. Come on, it's 30 through here. Let's go. Hmm. Are you close enough here to the river sticks to also gather the water? The eerie river Styx flows under and around the path to the gate. There's no access to the water from this side of the river Styx. Yep, that's the only place to go, and I don't believe you can go back. Charon is gone. There is no way back across the river Styx. Yep, so unless you feel like swimming, I hope you got it. Alexander is standing on a path in front of a large gate. The path is surrounded by the chilly river Styx. Charon, the ferryman, is gone. Alexander has the feeling that he's close to his destination, that it must, in fact, lie on the other side of the gate. Hmm, well, seeing it's the only door on the only path, I'm assuming you're correct. The large wooden gate at the end of the path is closed. I think we can use the skeleton key on that. Alexander doesn't want to try that. The eerie path just might reply. Yeah, knowing this place, it may. The cold river. Alexander's voice echoes in the passageway, coming back to his ears as an eerie wailing sound. Love it. All right, let's go. Deeper and deeper. Whoop. Stereo. Alexander walks too close to the menacing gate. Oh. Well, glad I saved as a precaution there. So, oddly, it didn't have any voice lines recorded. It might be one of those bugs with scum. Because the same thing happened with, I think, one of the Cosima conversations where it was just... No, 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 no. It was uh, when we were talking to Azriel and... Uh, oh, the, the... Oh, God, the king and queen, the angels. I can't... I'm, I'm blanking on their names. So, I may have to go back and re-record this in DOSBox if he's not having a voice. The skeleton key is made out of small bones. 
on yon door. Alexander doesn't see a keyhole in that gate. Oh, I guess not. How do I wake up the gate? Do I just maybe just keep my distance a little bit? Eh? 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 Oh, no. Alexander reaches out to open the gate. Oh, that's how. Okay. Suddenly, the wood trembles beneath his fingertips. Back up. What touch has awakened my sleep? Hi, Tony J. I smell the blood of a English man. Reach out thine hand again, fleshy human, that I might devour it. It has been centuries since I last ate. My God, his voice. Tony J, narrate everything in the world, please gate is a malicious looking wooden gate. It eyes Alexander hungrily. Um, you want my hand? Sure. You can take my hand in exchange for letting me through. Just the hand, though. Just like a little nibble. Nibble, nibble, nibble. Alexander decides to try to force the gate open. No, that's not what I... No, you're misinterpreting my intentions. No. All right, fine. We'll talk to the living gate to hell. Despite his fear, Alexander summons his bravest voice to command the living gate. I would pass, Gate. I have business with your master. My master and thine, human. I would be pleased to introduce thee. Only step forward and thou shalt meet him shortly. No, thank you. I come to meet the Lord of the Dead with my flesh still in- It's hard to say no thank you and sound menacing. Past human, when I would much rather Eat you. I have been told that there is a way for humans to enter Death's realm. There must be something I can do. Some task that will allow me to pass through your doors, Gate. Hmm. I seem to recall something. A trick. Uh, perhaps um, a test. I flummoxed the mm. gates. Ah, yes. Should a human try to pass, Bink. a riddle is Gates won't to ask. <clears throat> a riddle it is, then. Say, and if right. thou wouldst fail to answer Gate, his thirsty jaws will be thy fate. Agreed. Listen as though it meant thy life, then, human, for it surely does. My first is foremost legally. My second circles outwardly. My third leads all in victory. My fourth twice ends a nominee. My whole is this gate's only key. My first is foremost legally. My second circles outwardly. My third leads all in victory. My fourth twice ends a nominee. My whole is this gate's only key. Thanks, I heard him. You don't have to repeat it so soon. Okay, I I adore this little riddle because it's so easy and yet it's so easy to overthink it because you know, my first and foremost legally, it's like, oh, what a lawyer or something like that. But I mean, it's obviously like, you're, it's, it's just one's letters. So think simply because this game is made for adults and for kids so it's got to be something that anyone can solve my first is foremost legally so my first letter is the foremost letter in legally so l my second circles outwardly circles the only circle letter there is o my third leads all in victory what's the most victorious letter no i don't have to think that much my third my third leads all in victory the first letter in victory is v my fourth twice ends a nominee. So, there are two letters, twice at the end. It is E. The answer, as all riddles are in Sierra games, besides Nickel Scrompscomper in King's Quest 1, let's never talk of that again, is love. The answer is love. Ah, thou traitor of the mortal plane, how didst thou guess love? 
That riddle should never have been solved. Love is unknown in this realm. You know it. Love cannot be banished, even from this place. There are spirits still pining of it on the surface above. Still less can it be banished from my heart. Enough! Burden me not with thy poetry. Pass through, and quickly, before I change my mind. All right, head on through the gates. Oh, yeah, and they're not messing around. You, if you don't get through there right away, my guess is you would close again and you will die. Another one of my favorite little rooms. Uh, I mean, especially when you talk to him and you, and you see and you learn about what all this actually is. I just adore it. Alexander is standing in the hall of the Lord of the Dead. It is here that the spirits of the newly dead complete their journey and meet death himself. The servants of the Lord of the Dead stand silently at the head of the path to his throne. I mean, what are they guarding? I mean, just all I see are a bunch of spirits running around. Are they just staying here just in case a mortal decides to come in and try and challenge him again? Oh, look, he's up there directing traffic. That's cute. In the center of the great cavern, the Lord of the Dead reigns over the hosts of the dead. He waves spirits into the sea of souls in an endless stream. What things the spirits tell him are best unheard by mortal ears. Such a great character. And I'm sure rooted in mythology, maybe I should do just like a special video which is nothing but all the mythological references of King's Quest VI. The Lord of the Dead's throne is surrounded by the Sea of Souls. The living sea swirls with the spirits of those who once walked the mortal realm. What awaits them? Alexander cannot know. The spirits in the Sea of Souls are heedless of the mortal in their midst. Alexander's throat tightens in awe and fear as he surveys the scene before him. He is unable to call out. Oh, like he normally does and makes a complete ass of himself. All right, so our next step in the realm of the dead is to actually talk to the Lord of the Dead himself. And again, what am I... Well, I, I know I say this with almost every single scene in this entire game, but one of my favorite little conversations and pieces in this entire game. So we're going to save that to open up the next part. So next time, we're going to go talk to the Lord of the Death and throw down the gauntlet. So until then, I remain... Good night, Jelly Beans. Good night.